His eyes remained transfixed on the screen as he replayed the footage repeatedly, over and over again. He could not believe what his eyes were seeing. His heart just sh shattered. Just a few minutes ago, he was watching his daughter on CCTV, savoring the moments when her smile lit up the screen, her graceful dance moods filled the room with joy, and her infectious laughter echoed through his heart. All the father wanted was to download footage from surveillance cameras installed inside the family's residence of his daughter for safekeeping. Celine, his four-year-old daughter whom he had tragically lost just six days ago, due to what he had attributed to an expired or faulty vaccination. <laughs> But within the tender embrace of these memories, an inexplicable revelation seized his attention on the monitor. The surveillance cameras installed inside the family's residence unveiled a horrific crime that had been perpetrated. The shocking realization that his daughter was not lost due to a vaccination, but something far more sinister. So if you want to know what he saw, sit right back and welcome. You've just crossed over into the distorted perception zone. As always, it's crucial to emphasize that each person represents themselves, and their actions are not a reflection of their nationality, culture, or faith. Let's respect one another's diverse viewpoints and backgrounds, and do not send hate to anyone mentioned. We extend our deepest condolences to the families of the victims highlighted in today's narrative, acknowledging their pain and loss. It's important to note that certain details might be inaccurate or lost in translation. And now, without any further delay, let the tale unfold. Date 4th October 2014 Location Lebanon It was a typical day in the Reckon household. The father set off for his daily work routine, and the two elder kids went to school, leaving the mother, daughter, and their trusted domestic worker, Bozai, at home. What seemed like an ordinary morning soon descended into an abyss of tragedy. At around 11.30 in the morning, the mother entrusted her daughter to Bozai's care, a nanny who had faithfully served the family for three years. Little did she know that this seemingly mundane decision would spiral into a heart-wrenching nightmare. Just two hours later, the mother received a phone call that would shatter her world. Bozai's frantic voice delivered the devastating news that Celine was unresponsive, ice cold to the touch, and in dire distress. The mother instructed Bose to get Celine ready as she would be there in minutes to take her to the hospital. <laughs> In a panic, the mother rushed back home. But before she could arrive, concerned neighbors had already whisked Celine and Bozai to the nearest hospital. There, the mother waiting and praying for her child to pull through unfortunately received the crushing news that no parent should ever have to bear. Her beloved child had tragically passed away. The family were crushed. Suspicion initially swirled around a recently administered vaccine as Celine had received her immunization just the day before her sudden demise. On the 6th of October, the family laid their precious daughter to rest, and they started to get ready for their impending move to Canada, which was scheduled before Celine's untimely death. But fate had more revelations in store. On October 9th, Celine's father, yearning to preserve some last memories of his daughter, decided to review and download the footage from the home's CCV camera. Little did he know that this act would unearth a baffling and sinister secret. While he was sitting with an employee from the security surveillance company, who was helping him download footage, the employee noticed some glitches. Some minutes were missing on the day of Celine's passing. So they sat and watched the whole day unfold, and a chilling sequence of events came to light. The video revealed an ordinary day until 11.41 a.m. when Bozai unusually drew the living room curtains closed. She then went to her room. After about 10 to 12 minutes, at about 11.53 a.m., Celine left her room and went towards Bozai's room, staying there for less than 10 seconds before rushing back to her room and covering herself with her blankets, shivering and looking scared. She later covered her face when Bozai was seen saying something from the corridors, as you can see here. A few minutes later, at 11.57 a.m., a sinister turn of events occurred. Bozai, caught on film in the kitchen, tried to hide as she covertly tampered with the electric box located there, cutting off the electricity to the home. You can see that clearly on the CCTV camera footage here. For 20 agonizing minutes, the security cameras remained off. When the lights finally returned at 12.23, Bozai was seen checking on Celine. But the little girl's body, covered in a blanket, had not moved an inch since the camera feed resumed. Bozai, for the next 20 minutes, continued to clean the house per usual. 
mopping the floors, cleaning the kitchen, including cleaning Celine's bedroom as she lay motionless in bed while periodically checking Celine's body temperature. At 12.55, Bozai once again cut off the electricity to the home, this time for five minutes. When the lights came back on, Celine's lifeless body remained in her bed, but now was uncovered. Sorry, will not share the footage, it's most likely at that time she was already gone. However, the full footage is online. Anyway, it wasn't until a full 24 minutes had passed that Bozai finally alerted the family, describing their daughter as cold and unresponsive. She was seen then trying to administer CPR to the little child and then wrapping her in a blanket and carrying her to the living room, where she placed her on a chair while she went to get dressed before taking the child downstairs to meet the mother as instructed. After the father saw what transpired on the CCTV, fueled by suspicion and not able to comprehend what he has witnessed, he contacted the authorities. With the police's involvement, Bazai initially confessed to her involvement in Selene's death, providing gruesome details of suffocation describing in disturbing detail how she carried out the unthinkable act of suffocating Celine with her own hands, the hands that Celine used to kiss and hold, then using the pillow to finish her off. In the midst of this heinous act, Celine vomited on her green cat-themed pajama top. Bozai then decided to change Celine into another green pajama top, attempting to hide the evidence of her horrifying actions and cleaning the floor from Celine's vomit. Now the question remained, why would Bozai do such a thing to the child just few hours ago she was playing with and taking care of? What could a four-year-old girl have done to deserve that? What happened in those ten seconds in Bozai's room that led to this heinous act? Initially, Bozai admitted that the catalyst was Celine had seen some of the things Bozai stole from their home and was afraid Celine would go tell on her. However, she later retracted her confession making up two different scenarios, leading to a complex and challenging investigation. The case eventually proceeded to trial, during which the evidence, including the CCTV footage and Bozai's initial admission, was presented. After a thorough legal process, Bozai was ultimately found guilty of her involvement in Selene's death. She was sentenced to serve time in Lebanese prisons as a result of her conviction providing some form of closure for the grieving family and a measure of justice for the tragic loss they endured. However, during the investigation, the media decided to cover the story from a different angle, scrutinizing the father's calm reactions and demeanor. Instead of showing sympathy for the grieving man, who was already burdened by his child's tragic death, he found himself under the unforgiving spotlight of public judgment and opinion. Questions abounded. Why did he initially attribute Celine's death to a vaccine? Why didn't he name the accused doctor? And why did he appear composed when recounting the story in a media interview? Why wasn't an autopsy conducted? And why wasn't an on-site investigation initiated? Why did it take six long days for the CCTV footage to be reviewed, revealing the dark secrets that had unfolded within the confines of the Rakan household? Why didn't he stay in Lebanon during the investigation and proceeded with the move to Canada? Doubts also arose about the hospital's oversight, how had they missed vital clues pointing to suffocation as the cause of Celine's demise? All the questions led to multiple cover-up theories to arise. This enigmatic case, with its layers of intrigue and uncertainty, continues to captivate and haunt the collective consciousness, reminding us that, even in the age of surveillance, some mysteries remain tantalizingly unsolved.